Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Grace Fox, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, 2 Chronicles 27, 6. Today's Bible verse is 2 Chronicles 27, 6. So Jotham became mighty because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. The concept of obedience irked me when I was in high school. I felt like it wrecked my life every Saturday night. That's when my four best friends and I hung out together. The trouble was, I was the only one whose parents enforced a curfew. Obedience, for me, meant leaving the party early. I always felt like I was shortchanged in the fun department. Becoming a mother flipped my perspective about obedience upside down. As I set rules to help my kids flourish, I began to understand that obedience is not life wrecking, it's life giving. Jotham, the focus of today's verse, was 25 years old when he became king of Judah, and he reigned for 16 years. 2 Chronicles 27.6 describes him as a man marked by a life of obedience. The New Living Translation reads, King Jotham was careful to live in obedience to the Lord his God. Other Bible versions say he walked steadfastly before the Lord. He aligned his ways with the ways of the Lord his God, or he did not waver in obeying the Lord his God. Some say Jotham prepared his ways before the Lord, his God. In Hebrew, prepare means to fix, establish, or set. It implies intentional effort over an extended time. Now combine this with a dictionary definition of fixed as stationary, firmly planted, not readily movable. When we put these together, we can assume then that Jotham fixed his heart on honoring God and refused to move from his conviction. He modeled consistency over the long haul in living out his faith in God. Here are several ways he lived an obedient life. First, he demonstrated humility. He'd witnessed his father, King Uzziah, experience downfall due to pride and he chose not to follow those footsteps. He refused to abuse his position of power. He carried out his royal responsibilities with little pomp, but lots of integrity. Second, he demonstrated righteousness. The people in his kingdom continued in their evil ways, but Jotham did what was right in the sight of the Lord. His faith remained untainted, despite being immersed in a very corrupt culture. Next, Jotham demonstrated a hunger for God. Historically, spiritual apathy led to the temple's deterioration. Conversely, spiritual revival led to its restoration due to the people's renewed interest in the things of God. So repairs on the temple were a sign of spiritual health. Scholars suggest that Jotham's reconstruction of the gate linking the temple and the palace indicate his hunger for worship and open access to God. Next, he demonstrated love. King Uzziah, his father, built towns in Ashdod and among the Philistines for his people, but the location was chosen more for military strategy than for sincere concern for the people's well-being. Jotham, however, built towns in Judah's own hill country and then constructed fortresses and towers in the forest to provide security. Like his father, he was skilled in war, but he was also skilled in understanding and meeting others' needs. And last, Jotham demonstrated wisdom. He experienced victory when he defeated the Ammonites. Rather than kill them, he forced them to pay a tribute to Judah for three years. This included about four tons of silver, 75,000 bushels of wheat, 
and 75,000 bushels of barley annually. This was a tremendous provision for his people and proved his wisdom as a king. Jotham is one of few Hebrew kings whose story ended well. The secret to his success is simple yet profound. Obedience. He ordered his way before the Lord, and God blessed him. If we want our story to end well, then we need to live well today. That means ordering our ways before the Lord. Our motive for obedience is not to earn God's favor by trying to be a morally good person. Our motive is to express our love for the one who loves us and wants us to flourish. And so, like Jotham, let's choose to demonstrate humility. Jesus is our ultimate example. He humbled himself and took on the form of a servant, and then he humbled himself further by dying a criminal's death for us. We demonstrate humility by recognizing that the world does not revolve around us. We consider others as more important than ourselves, and we recognize our complete dependency upon God for everything, even our ability to take our next breath. Next, we demonstrate righteousness. 1 Peter 1.15 says, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. <laughs> that sounds like a tall order, right? And it is, because none of us are holy. We're all sinners in need of God's forgiveness and mercy. We're all in need of his help to equip us to live in a way that honors him. And so relying on his Holy Spirit in us, we live each day making choices that reflect his character and commands as reflected in his word. We do so in private when no one else is looking, but we also live holy lives in public, even though it might cost us in a culture that's increasingly opposed to God's truth. We demonstrate a hunger for God. Isaiah 55, 6 tells us to seek the Lord and call on him. A hunger for God compels us to seek him regularly, not just when we're in trouble, to seek Him, to get to know Him better, not for what we can get from Him. To invite Him into every part of our day, to make His priorities our priorities. That's demonstrating a hunger for God. And then we demonstrate love. Jesus showed us what pure love looks like. He died for us, not because we were so good, but because we were sinners. He died for our sake, not for what he could get from us in return. How willing are we to love others in the same way? And last, we demonstrate wisdom. As God's followers and ambassadors, we are not to go through life willy-nilly, following our whims or whatever seems right in the moment. James 1.5 tells us to ask for wisdom, and God will give us a generous supply so we can do life in the best way possible. Obedience matters. Jotham ordered his ways before the Lord his God, and God blessed him by making him a mighty man. Let's order our ways before the Lord our God, and he will bless us too. May I pray for you? Dear God, thank you for giving us Jotham's example so we can know it's possible to live a life marked by obedience. Teach us to order our ways before you, and help us do so with joyful abandonment, knowing your commands are given for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed this episode, would you leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast app? It helps us connect to more listeners like you. This episode was produced by Kelly Gibbons and Stephen Sanders, with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. We want to thank our wonderful hosts, Jennifer Slattery and Grace Fox. You can hear more from Jennifer by visiting jenniferslatterylivesoutloud.com. And you can find out more from Grace by visiting gracefox.com. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com.